Somebody asked a beautiful question, and I'll conclude with it. You can you can turn this off now. Beautiful question. He said, the Sahaba had so many opinions. Why? And how come they just didn't tell us what the Prophet said about the Quran? It would have been easier. The thing is, Allah designed this Quran in a really incredible way. He didn't say so that the Prophet reflects on it. He said, لِيَدَبَّرُوا ayatihi." So they reflect on it. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So you understand. Who was supposed to ask questions about the ayat and ponder about the ayat and wonder about the ayat? Who was supposed to do that? We were. If the Prophet ﷺ, my theory is if the Prophet ﷺ started doing tafsir of the Qur'an, he'd still be alive. There's too much wisdom there. Allah would keep him alive longer than Nuh Because <laughs> it wouldn't be done. And even if he did the most brief tafsir of the Qur'an, he described one ayah with one hadith. If he did that, you know what would happen? Nobody would ever contemplate the Qur'an again. You know why? Because we'd say, how can I speak after the Prophet has spoken? How can I speak? I can't have any thoughts about this because the thoughts have come from the ultimate authority, the Prophet himself, a God's authorized teacher. Allah gave us this Qur'an and He spread it around the world and He said, this is ayat for people who will contemplate. Imagine the first century, 10 years after the Prophet ﷺ, people have reached Abyssinia, China, India. They're all over the place. Those people, when they're hearing the ayat of the Qur'an, they're like, do you have a tafsir with this? Can I, can, can I can read? What were they doing? They were hearing the ayat and what were they doing with the ayat? They were contemplating. And as they were contemplating, they were accepting Islam. And as they were accepting Islam, we became Muslim as a result of that. What we did is we replaced tadabbur with tafsir. And then we said, tafsir is only for scholars. It's not for you. Sure, tafsir is for scholars. To write. And it's for me to read. And then to do tadabbur. But we, we separated the Muslim population from engaging with the Qur'an. I come from Pakistan, and in South Asia, one of the most common things you'll hear about the Qur'an is, don't read it directly, don't read a translation, don't think about it, you'll get misguided. And I say, the book that came to guide humanity and your religious advice is, don't think about it, because you'll get misguided. Incredible. It's just incredible. The job of those who know is to make it easy for those who don't know. But you believe shahid al ghaib. That's that's our job. What do we do now? No, no, no. We are not going to come to you. You have to come to us. <laughs> the, the, we we flip the script on this 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 the, the delivery of the message. I want every one of you to develop a love of contemplating Quran. And you will see benefits of it in your life that you never imagined. Never. I'm telling you, it is the most fulfilling thing you will do with your life that I could do with my life is contemplate the Quran. You know, I find studying tafsir exhausting. But after, when the tafsir study is done and I start doing tadabbur, oof, nothing like it. Best job in the world. It's the best job in the world. I was sitting with Sheikh Suhaib in Scotland in a cafeteria. We were just doing tadabbur for five hours. And I just had to stop in the middle and say, isn't this the most amazing job on the planet? And he said, yeah, don't tell anyone. I was like, I'm gonna. <laughs> I want all of you to have that joy. He said, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا وَخَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Because of the Quran, they should be filled with joy. It's better than everything else that they're gathering. Let's gather some Qur'an. <laughs>